hi to everybody. I can hardly believe that this is our almost our last Sunday. No, it is our last Sunday for the moment. Um, and that hopefully next week we will be able to see each other uh, out on Hampstead Heath. That was just going to be very amazing. And we've done over these weeks the incredible story of George Muller. Um, this is a story that's greatly impacted onto my own heart and my own life. Um, and we've finished off that story by looking at the story Jesus told of the sower, um, which relates very closely to George Muller's story. And do you remember um, how in that great day in Israel, uh, when the crowds had become so vast that Jesus had to come and stand in a boat and he calls out to them, listen, listen, if you've got ears, hear what I'm saying. And then he tells the story that a sower went out to sow. And then he explains to the disciples afterwards that this seed is the word of God. That's what he tells them. Do you remember we've talked about this, how the Bible uh, is different from all the other books? All the other books in the world contain information, but the Bible alone contains spiritual power, that it's got a latent, hidden, supernatural power in it, that when it reaches the human heart, unhindered by problems in that person's heart, um, great and wonderful things can happen. And yesterday we were out in the park again with Abby and Jem, and we stood beneath a huge oak tree again. And Abby said to me, I say to my mum, when I look at this tree, at these huge trees I say to her, how can something so big come from something so small how incredible that from that tiny little acorn this hundred foot oak tree can come and it is just a picture of the incredible things that can happen when this word of God reaches our hearts and we've looked at the soils do you remember the four soils and we've talked about how the hard heart where the the seed can't even get in because of wrong attitudes we might have we've talked about the rocky path where there's a little bit of soil and this is when we turn away from from God when things get really difficult instead of turning towards him we turn away and then the weedy soil which is when our hearts are overwhelmed by um, by the cares and anxieties of this life about issues to do with money and when we have um, a hunger for other things not for spiritual things then the weeds overwhelm that seed and then finally week four we've got to the good soil this is when the issues have all been dealt with the hardness and the rocks and the weeds and now there's good soil left and this one receives into their heart God's words and I think the power of this story is because this story is the story of our hearts. And this story for me has very, very much been the story of my own heart. And there was a, a missionary to the uh, Native Americans, um, a man called David Brainerd, and he used this expression. He said when he met the Native Americans, he said they seemed to be strangers to their own hearts. And he said as he met some of the Christians out there that they even seemed to be strangers to their hearts. And I know that I have been and probably still am in some ways a stranger to my own heart, not really knowing the state of my heart. And uh, about... Um, or oh, I think it's about five or six years ago now, um, through a perfect storm of desperate circumstances. So these were circumstances, um, there was a, a, we were in real difficulties within our family, uh, there was a financial crisis that was really serious, and we then had a very serious health crisis. Um, and this all happened at once in this perfect storm. Um, and at that time, instead of God seemed, instead of to pro pro providing um, quick answers for these difficulties, he seemed to turn the spotlight for me onto my own heart. And I began to see uh, some of my heart as I'd not seen it before. To begin with, I saw where I had wrong attitudes that I didn't even really know that I had, um, particularly resentments, um, some towards people, some towards God even, for, in my mind, allowing the circumstances. Um, also, he began to show me how when things were difficult, 
um, I often turned away. My default position almost was to turn away and think, well, I'll try and sort this all out myself because you haven't helped me. Um, and also these weeds. I began to see that um, I was too occupied with um, stuff around me um, and particularly that uh, that I often didn't have enough hunger, real desire for spiritual things. Um, I was distracted and pulled away by stuff around me. Um, and I began to pray at that time and I'm still so much praying, Lord, uh, would you take these things from my heart? Would you work in my heart? Would you make my heart good soil? Because for the farmer who in this story is God, um, the soil, the good soil in itself isn't the end. He's got his eyes on a bigger prize. The point of the good soil is the harvest, the harvest. And God is wanting each of us in whatever way he chooses for us to bring a harvest to him, fruit for God in our lives. And um, when we stand before him, we need to remember that one day when we, we are there, he's not going to ask us, you know, did you pay your mortgage? Um, what results did your kids get in their GCSEs? No, he's going to ask us, what did you do for my kingdom's sake? And so I thought we'd just finish today with a picture. We've got a picture here of George Muller. See, George Muller had got his eyes on this kingdom. The Bible teaches us that what we see with our eyes is temporary. What we cannot see is eternal. And he'd got his eyes on this eternal kingdom. And he brought a harvest to God because he had allowed God to make his heart good soil. And so we're just going to finish um, with this final one, uh, the final message from me. Um, we're going to pray this prayer again that I've been praying. I've been walking up and down Tufnell Park Road on my way to work, praying this and crying out, God, would you make my heart good soil? So we're just going to finish by praying now. Oh, Lord, we, uh, we worship you in our hearts today. Uh, we give thanks to you um, our great God and the Father of our, of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, like it teaches us in your word, we give thanks to you. We give thanks to you for you are our merciful and kind Father. Um, and from you all help comes. And we need your help, Lord. We want to say, yes, we're listening. We're listening to the story that you told um, on the shores of Lake Galilee on that day. We are listening. And Lord, we're saying to you, would you come? Would you come and make our heart good soil? Would you take out the hard parts? Would you take out the stones? Would you take out the weeds, Lord? Father, would you make our heart good soil so that we ourselves, like George Muller, who brought that great harvest to you, we in some way could bring a harvest to you, Jesus. Uh, we know that you stand at the door and you knock. We welcome you afresh again today. Come in, Lord. Come into our hearts and continue this work that you're doing inside us. Amen. Amen.